right, ladies and gentlemen, this first match is one fall. It is for the Southern Fried Classics Championship title. Your referee, D. Byers. Ladies and gentlemen, now making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 230 pounds. He is one member of the approved. This is Bobby Moore. Introducing his opponent! Please welcome from Atlanta, Georgia, your Southern Fried Classics champion, Naja Sizzle! All right, guys, Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. This is Shindig, the first. What an incredible reaction for the Classics champion as he comes out. And they absolutely, oh, Jesus. Shotgun start there for Bobby Moore. He goes for a quick pin. Just a two count there from referee D. Byers in charge of this matchup. Bobby Moore dumping Nodgesism out to the floor. On the attack early on, super fast, and he's going after Nodgesism. Nodgesism smartly slides back into the ring. Championship defense here, big elbows in the corner. The springboard, if, if you will. And the unique offense, some receipts there for Bobby Moore. Nodges has been going for a quick pin too. Moore kicks out just at one. Nodges has again with those beautiful kicks, pounding away at the head of Bobby Moore. And a drop kick to the chest and the champion is in control. See him stalking Bobby Moore in the corner. Some unique offense coming. Split leg moonsault. And just a two count again, and Nodgesism is pulling out all the stops right now. Bobby Moore, and he have traded standing over each other in the middle of the ring here the last couple of months at Southern Fried Cho's. Nodgesism standing toe to toe there with Bobby. Those vicious shots there, like I've always said, Bobby Moore 
has the hardest hands and the hardest elbow in the business. And he is certainly showing that right now. Adding insult to injury, a chin breaker from Naja. Going up. Big reaction from the crowd, springboard. Monkey flip there, right into the far side of the ring, going for a pin. Byers went down and just had a two count. Nod just says I'm off the ropes, ducking that clothesline. Oh my God. Bobby Moore with a vicious clothesline right to the back of the head. Moore wants that classic championship badly. He is trying tonight to become the first tag team champion and classic champion in Southern Fried history. Bobby went high rent and paid for it. He is made out to the floor. Nodicism with that beautiful jump kick there. And he is ready to ready to fly. Coming at Bobby Moore, but Moore hit that elbow right into the top of the head. Almost like he was baiting Nodicism there. And the champion is in a bad spot. Right now on the floor with Bobby Moore. Big chop right to the chest there of Nodicism. Bobby Moore back under the rope to break the count. Bobby says he's gonna win this title here tonight. Bobby Moore with the head of Steven Moore's flying. Moore landed on Nodgerism hard. And the champion is out. Very uncharacteristic of Bobby Moore. He's pulling out all the stops to leave Shindig with gold. Bobby Moore just did a tope suicida out onto the floor. And Nodja Sism still has a fight in him. He's giving it to Moore ahead of steam off the ropes and Moore catches him and plants him right in the canvas. Just a two count there. You listen to this crowd get behind Nodicism. Nodicism is just feeling it right now. Nodicism tells Bobby Moore he's number one. Moore gets back to stomping him. Sends Nadja off the ropes. Nadja ducks under the clothesline. Nadja has a sleeper hold locked in on. Wow. Pounding the way to the top of Moore's head. Beautiful spin kick and Moore on wobbly legs. Could this be it? Nadja sends him with a jumping punch there as well. He's going in and a cross body. Right to the midsection of Moore, Nodja Sism is down. Nodja Sism flying right into Bobby Moore. Moore hit the barricade. Both these men outside the ring now. Adam Vance, I'm telling you, Shindig, this is huge. Ninth anniversary of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. Very and much so. John the Body Johnson joining me. Nodges hits him on the top rope. Big, beautiful, high cross body. Right across, Bobby Moore gets him a two count again. Stop. 
And Nodges sees him taking a moment there to decide what to do, and he's looking at Bobby. The man trying to take his title away from him, the fighting champion. And this Nodges. is a heck of a way to kick off Shindig. I mean, the Southern Fried Classics Championship. Moore catches the foot. Nodges sees him again, that spinning back kick. And the legs are wobbly and down, and Nodges sees him. Climbing the ladder again. He's going up to the top rope. Three quarters of the way across the ring. Big frog splash there. Could this be it? Placed all his oh. weight across the body of Bobby Moore and still couldn't get it done. And right now locks in his submission hold. Listen to this crowd chanting tab. They're trying to get Bobby Moore out of this matchup here. Moore's fighting out of it. And a buckle bomb breaks the hold as Moore with the fireman's carry. Sets Nadia system down, back press with a leg hook. Two and a half again. Very close, Bobby Moore almost became the fifth Southern Fried Classics champion. Bobby Moore looking to add some singles gold to his resume here in Southern Fried Championship Wrestling, of course, most of his career known as a tag team wrestler with Adrian Hawkins, who we'll see later on here tonight. And right now, looks like he's going for a pile driver. Is Bobby Moore? No, I just said it may have hit him in the groin there, but D. Byers said didn't. Back stomp as well. Bobby would be the first tag team champion and classics champion. The combo there. Awesome history here in Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. Definitely looking to do that. I mean, two thirds of the trifecta of the Grand Slam, the Triple Crown of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. And right now, Nodgesism is up on the top rope. Oh! Oh my God. Bobby just cleaned his clock, he's out. Not three count there, but Nodgesism's foot was on the rope. The bell is rung. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match and new Southern Fried Club. Bobby Moore has the championship belt. Walking around the ring. He's climbing in now. Referee D. Byers is pointing to Nodgesism's foot. The foot's on the rope, referee D. Byers waving off that three count. He's talking to our ring Ladies announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, this match will start over right now. D. Byers has reversed this decision. The Bobby match is will living. continue. The match will continue, you're right, JJ. Bobby has the title belt, now the match is gonna continue. But what, this is gonna get him DQ'd. He can't do this, Bobby. You know, you were so close. No, I just see him going after that title belt. Got that arm. He's locked Bobby in again. D. Byers moving the title belt. Bobby's trying his best to get out of it. Almost to the ropes. Bobby is so close to the ropes. There is he tapping. He's tapping. Bobby Ladies and out. gentlemen, your winner of the match and still Southern Fried Classics champion, Naja Sizzum! What a great opening matchup there for Southern Fried Shindig, our ninth anniversary show. As Naja Sizzum is victorious here, the fans are loving it.
Ladies and gentlemen, from Sean, Island, Michigan, this is the Lethal Dose Strict Nine! The challenge has been answered. The Hoss fight is here. Cruel has answered the open challenge of Strict Nine. And these two men stand face to face. Cruel has him by the throat. And I don't think Strict Nine was expecting this one when he put out an open challenge. The challenge has been answered. Strict Nine may be a monster, but this man right here, Cruel, it's a bigger monster than Strict Nine. No doubt about it here. And he is taking it to Strict Nine. We haven't seen Strict Nine actually shocked at somebody coming through the curtain, number one. But he is taking it, beating so far in this matchup here, just in the early going. And Cruel is working him to death right now. I tell you what, man, what a surprise. Huge surprise here indeed. The surprises are always big here at Shindig. You never know who's going to show up. You never know what's going to happen. We still have a lot of great action here tonight as part of Shindig, the ninth anniversary of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling, continuing the legacy that Charles Anschutz started. 2013, I'm telling you something there, Adam Vance. This is a huge night. Absolutely. The one man that has been at all of our shindigs is Logan Creed. And that is a, that is a continued here with Cruel coming out. And he's taking it to Strict Nine here. That open challenge is just perfect for a madman like Cruel. And referee KT, Ken Tide, up to an eight count here. Oh, right on the hardest part of the ring. Ouch. Went Strict Nine. You see Strict Nine struggling there, that back going right into the corner of the ring and Cruel coming back in, stalking his prey right in the center of the ring. You know, and usually we see Strict Nine on the other end of this one. Strict Nine's usually on his feet, intimidating other foes. And I'm not saying that Strict Nine's intimidated, but what we're seeing right now is Strict Nine being manhandled, and very few people have done that in the history of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. Oh, no doubt. He's a former heavyweight champion here at Southern Fried, as is Cruel. Cruel just taking him and picked him up by his head and just planted him right in the canvas. And Strict Nine's struggling to make his way to his feet here. We have already seen the Southern Fry Classics Championship defended. The tag team and the heavyweight title are still to be defended here this evening. <coughs> you see right here, Cruel sends Strick Nine in. Big full head of steam there. It's like getting hit by a truck. Picks up Strick Nine, drapes him over the top turnbuckle. He's heading up to the second ropes himself. I don't know what kind of offense we're gonna see out of this young man, but oh my God. Enormous avalanche fall away slam from the second rope and Cruel is making a statement tonight. 
And that is the power of Cruel that we saw right there. Oh, wait a minute. Strict time. Cruel's got him goozled again around the throat and Strict Nine's still punching. Double axe handles there right to the ribs. Strict Nine with some shoulder blocks. I can't believe he's even mustering this energy right now. Yeah, he's taking a lot of punishment. But that is the toughness of Strict Nine. That is the wherewithal of him. Big German suplex there. Cruel back up to a vertical base immediately. Yeah, that was very quick there. Cruel went for a kick. Strict nine blocked it a little bit, but still showing the effects of catching that right to the chest. I said, this is a place we haven't seen Strict nine in a long time. Cruel is signaling for that choke again. We've seen that choke breaker. There we go, that choke breaker across the knee. Strict nine's back up, are you kidding me? Another spear, these two men are trading it. Strict nine draped the arm and just got a two count there. Man. And now this crowd coming alive for Strict nine. Strict nine climbing up. Second turnbuckle going to the top here is Cruel. Makes his way back up to his feet again. You know, and let's talk about the toughness of Cruel here. He's taken two spears. Normally, Strict Knight can put man down with one. And a big superplex there. Jeez, man. I don't know if the ring is going to hold up for this match. This is incredible. Strict Both. Knight trying to get that second win. Both men trying to work their way back up to their feet. A superplex like that takes a toll on both men. You get to the point where your opponent is damaged enough where you can do that move, but you still pay the price when you land as well. And that's what Logan Creed's dealing with right now. Oh, don't call him Logan Creed. I learned my lesson. He put his hands around my throat. Yeah, I'm more, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna do that again. I apologize there. I'll have to go edit that one out. Strict nine going for a fireman's carry. Scorched earth from Cruel. Could this be it? Does he have enough in him to get the pinfall? And Strict nine looks like he's heading out to the floor. Yeah, Strict nine very wisely rolled outside the ring. You cannot pin him if he's underneath the ropes. Bobby Moore found that out about 10 minutes ago. And right now, Cruel has stepped out of the apron with Strict Nine. These two men there, it's in a bad spot. Strict Nine with a half of a spear, as much as he could get onto Cruel from that position that they were in, but Cruel is out on the floor now, and so is Strict Nine. Strict Nine trying to make his way back into the ring right now as Cruel does the same thing on the far side of the ring. Strict nine measuring Cruel for that spear. And he hits a, is that a third one or a fourth one there? That would have been like number four or five there. Count the one on the apron, I guess that's number four. And now Man. number five. Cruel again grabbing that midsection. Strict nine and softening him up. He's signaling for that F5 right now. Can he get the big man up? He sure can. Not as much spin on it as you'd like. Oh, wow. Cruel just sat right up after that one. Strict nine measuring Cruel as Cruel gets back up. Strict went for that spear, but Cruel hit him with a knee. A face plant now going for a cover again. Just a two count again, man. What's it gonna take to get a three count out of either one of these guys? I know, we've seen Cruel take like six spears and the fa found face down twice. And now Cruel 
Offensive flurry of his own and now hovering over Strick nine. I tell you what, every time I see Cruel, it looks like he's put on another 10 pounds of muscle. Just an impressive, impressive man. Great move there from Strick nine. Can he make the cover? Barely making it there and that is it. That is over Cruel down for a three count. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match, Strick Nine! Rule seven back into the ring to face Strick nine here after the three count. Wow. A show of respect there from Cruel to Strick nine there. As these two men had a hell of a battle here tonight. And that was a fight and a half for both men there. But nonetheless, Strip Nine comes out victorious. Boys, we had them so good. I mean, nobody, nobody knew it was us under those hoods. What? Oh, like a classic. I told you classic. We left those cocky little kids just laying in the middle of the ring. Let's give credit where it's due. They've won a couple of belts, so they're a little bit of grown men. So, yeah, but like I said, these idiots don't know A from B. And look, boys, June 4th, nobody is going to beat us three. No, there's no way. Oh, there must be no way. No, 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 you have to pick only two of you. What? No, that's how it was! Who, who Mr. said this? Mr. Bill Bill Bill's matchmaker. He got his phone. Hey, 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 who hey, Bill? Hey, you will be here in one minute! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So y'all hang in there. We've got the tag team match coming up right now. The titles are on the line. Your referee, David Weekly. Introducing first, from your mother's bedroom, here is Pepper Bottom and his tag team partner, the Million Dollar Mullet, Zach Mosley! Secrets 
in that black hole you call a brain before it's too late. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing their opponents. State of South Carolina, here are your Southern Fried Tag Team Champions, Hunter James, Luca Daniels, they are the Palmetto Express. tag team title match here. The fan favorites versus the exact opposite. The way that the exotic youth became number one contenders at our event here two weeks ago absolutely cemented them as hellions as far as this fan base is, sees them. And no let doubt. me tell you something right now. Exotic Youth has proven that they'll do whatever it takes, go to whatever lengths it takes to walk out the Southern Fried Tag Team Champions. So right now, I know they love the fans. I know they love to have a good time, but if I was the Palmetto Express, I would curb my enthusiasm just a little bit and make sure that they are prepared for the Exotic Youth. They have to be, this is the toughest because there's two of them out there, and there's one more member of the exotic youth out there somewhere. You don't know if he's going to interfere in this matchup or not, but these two men, they had to sign up two guys for this matchup, and that's who they have chosen to represent the youth. Our Pepperbottom and Mosley, but you got to know Bryce Cannon's out there somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, these guys, they travel in pack search, three of them. We found that out in the tag team battleground match just two weeks ago. And I was the one that had to deliver the news to them that they could only pick two guys to be in the match. They literally thought that all three of them were going to be able to go three on two for the Southern Fried Tag Team Championship. Yeah, it doesn't switch out like that. It's not Voltron, kids. You don't get to interchange parts. And Hunter James there with a wrist lock. In control of Zach Mosley. Mosley, you know, I'm gonna tell you man. something. You say what you want to about you know the tactics of Exotic Youth, but this Zach Mosley guy, he impresses me each and every time that I've seen him. Not only here in Southern Fried, but throughout the state of Georgia. This is one of the men that's the future of professional wrestling in this state. In there Ooh. with another future legend. Million dollar mullet got ruffled there a little bit. He's complaining to senior official David Weekly about it. They call him the million dollar mullet. You think he's got that thing insured through Lloyd's of London? Maybe it's possible. Goes after James again and he finds himself in the wrong place, the wrong part of town. Beautiful suplex from Hunter James, and Luca Daniels is tagged into the matchup. Double team face plant drop kick there. Beautiful move from the tag team champs. But the uh, exotic youth have pretty much had gold around their waist. Every promotion they've been in, they've only been at Southern Fried for a couple of events, but they have made themselves uh, made their presence felt for sure here at Southern Fried. 
Luca with a splash onto Pepperbottom and a drop kick. And Pepperbottom gets a high knee in the corner. Some places that'll cost you a hundred bucks. But right now, Luca Daniels. Oh, Luca. And there that's that is what we're talking about, the tactics of exotic youth. They caught Luca Daniels off guard. Luca Daniels just around two years in the sport of professional wrestling. Hunter James around that same time. Hunter James, of course, a third generation star. Oh, no doubt. I mean, both of these, all four of these guys have bright futures in the state of Georgia and beyond, for sure. And I'll tell you, the exotic youth, especially Zach Mosley and Cornelius Pepperbottom here, we see them gel together great as a unit, as a team. And part of that reason is they were trained by one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time, Robert Gibson, a former five-time NWA World Tag Team Champion with the Rock and Roll Express. So you know they learned a lot sitting under that tree of Robert Gibson. No doubt. If you're gonna, if you're gonna watch any Robert Gibson matches, you're gonna see a whole slew of bad tag teams, and that's what these guys watch. If they watch any Rock and Roll Express matches, they took notes about the opponents of the Rock and Roll Express more than they did what Ricky and Robert did, that's for sure. You can tell that right now. And right now, Cornelius Pepperbottom and Zach Mosley, they are just taking care of the tag team champions here. You got double teams there, and you see Hunter James out on the floor, and now only one member of the tag champs is in the ring right now while he's getting double teamed like crazy. Zach Mosley. And the thing is, he's still talking trash. We're not seeing frustration. He's going right in. He's staying on the aggressive here on Luca Daniels right there in the corner. He talks trash more than people at Waste Management. He is out there nonstop running his mouth the entire match. Big knee right to the side of the face of Daniels. Look at him. Drags Daniels in out from under the ropes. And a two count there for Mosley. Right now, the tag team champions could be seeing those championships slip away. Of course, they defeated the undeniable for those tag team championships. And ever since then, they've been fighting champions. I will give them credit. They have taken on every tag team that's been put in front of them. And you can see. Oh, yeah, look at that. Of course, it was Cornelius Pepperbottom that won the tag team battleground match. He was the last one. He eliminated Sal Renaro. All three members of Exotic Youth were entered into that hangman's neck breaker with a splash from the top. Great tag team maneuvering there, unorthodox at times, too. Oh, no doubt. They have a certain unique offense. All three of these guys have their own mindset coming out to these matches and coming out to the ring. But they are a unit for sure. And all come into this matchup and know what each other's doing behind each other's backs. Luca and Hunter have that chemistry, but they've only been together as a tag team right around a year at this point. Right now, oh, nice. Tag team maneuvering there. Double Russian leg sweep. Double super kicks to the jaw as well. They didn't get full extensions, but they might see a three count. A pinfall attempt hooking the leg into an ankle lock. That's what Zach Mosley just did to Luca Daniels. And right now you can hear the crowd here at the Boys and Girls Club of Monroe, Georgia come alive. They are trying to will on their favorites, this young tag team, the Palmetto Express. Zach Mosley using those ropes. Like momentum, be- yeah, momentum there is has certainly switched to the exotic youth now. And he used that ropes for momentum as well. And there's another tag team move.
A two count again from senior official David Weekly in charge of this tag team title match. And you can see the look of concern. We saw that from here on Hunter James as Luca Daniels has taken an enormous amount of punishment. And right now on the top, oh, wait a minute. Smart move from Luca, but a roll up from, oh. <laughs> Zach looked like he was gonna try and pin Cornelius. They had it goofed up, I had it goofed up, we all did. Hunter James, the freshman, is in the ring now, drop kicking his way through the exotic youth right now. Oh, and there it is, Pro Wrestling's prettiest power slam from Hunter James. Hunter pointing to the turnbuckle of the far corner. Beautiful moonsault crash landing. Luca, splash from Luca Daniels. Hunter's in for the pin. Could this be it? Mosley kicked out at two. Weekly's an inch away from being a three count. And you can see right now the Palmettos in control again. Oh, wait a minute. Pepperbottom with a shot, another tag team maneuver here. Super kick to the back of the head and Hunter James. Swan time bomb from Zach Mosley. Back press gets him a two and a half count as well and Hunter James feeling it in his ribs. Luca Daniels is in the ring now. Zach Mosley's in the ring now. Pepperbottom on the apron, taking a nap on the bottom turnbuckle. And you can see there those knee strikes by Mosley. Oh, wait a minute. Hunter James escapes out. Fireman's carry over the shoulder. Oh, just took out Pepperbottom. Pepperbottom's illegal man, so's James. Luca Daniels is up. Let's see what they've got planned. They planted Pepper Bottom Hunter. That is it. I gotta go do something. I'm gonna be right back. Ladies see you in a bit, JJ. The match and still Southern Fried Tag Team Champions, Hunter James. Luca Daniels, the Palmetto Express! You're talking to yourself You came in this world alone Told you back. 
Too young to let love break my heart Young at heart But it's getting much too late To find ourselves so far apart
tonight. A 22-year prolific career has reached its terminus. This is the farewell match. Introducing first, in the corner to my left, the manager. She is the attaché for the approved. She is the baroness of faithfulness, the director of covert operations. She is the game mistress, the first lady of Southern Fried Wrestling, Miss Kelly Sexton. Instructions there from referee Tristan Michaels. In charge of this matchup here, man sent across from Todd Sexton. Trained under Todd Sexton at the wild side, Dojo. Todd will slap right to the side of the face of Nick Hallen. And it's on. Yeah, this is not gonna be a technical fight here, folks. As uh, these two men call an elbow tie up. Back and forth there again, joined the man who's called many a top Texas matches here, John the Body Johnson. I'm going to tell you the tension in that ring right now, when I was in there for those introductions, it, 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 you could have cut it with a knife. That's how thick the tension was. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have known Todd before his career even started watching these two men right here. A very emotional evening. No doubt, like you said, at our last event, this was the one match he wanted to finish his career with, was to get some kind of revenge to Nick Halen. And he's gonna do that right now. He's in the best shape of his career. You saw him go against Kyle Matthews here. I think the tension is there. That's the two that have tension right now. This is incredible. Yeah, look at this piece of garbage. Going to put him between. Put Kelly between him and Todd here. 
piece of garbage. And the vulture comes in and takes the attack to Todd as Todd comes back into the ring right now. And, you know, and I, and I mentioned it earlier, you know, in my introductions, Todd Sexton trained Nick Haley. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, you know, it's these two men know each other very well. 20 plus years of history here. But it's not about what he's taught him. It's about what Nick Halen has done since Thanksgiving night right here in Monroe, Georgia. He left with Kelly Sexton ever since then. We've seen, you know, photos and videos on social media. You know, and now Todd here getting his farewell. Oh, right there, the shining wizard, that running knee. Beautiful there. And showing some love for his, his departed friend, Jimmy Rave, who we lost at the end of last year. You'll see Todd Sexton, you know, paying tribute to Jimmy. They were so close. You see men battling here. Todd trying to get him into the ring right now. Nick is just pounding away at Todd Sexton's back. This guy's just trading punches here right now. As much as you thought the strict time had super. Oh, we got a sleeper hole locked in there. Halen smartly dumps out of the way and heads out. Uh, looked like he was on the floor for a minute there, but he broke that uh, sleeper hole there that Todd had locked in. I'm going to tell you, you know, it's it's been a pleasure for the past 20 plus years to watch Todd Sexton go in that ring and do what he does better than most anybody out there. And right now, though, Nick Halen in control. You know, we all talk, you know, it was Todd Sexton who brought Nick Halen back into professional wrestling. Nick Halen had left for a number of years. Todd Sexton brought him in as part of He's the, the to Sexton get Alliance. Slapping. Nick is trying to distract Tristan there to get Kelly to slap him, and Kelly's not going to do it. Yeah, she's. Matt Hankins would have done that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you got to wonder. Yeah, look at him. Oh, Todd, roll him up. Almost had him there just a two count. But I think Todd wants a little bit more out of this match than just that. You know, I'm going to get a win, but not like that. Watching Kelly refuse the slap, though. Jesus, what impact. No. Is it that she wants Nick to beat Todd on his own? Because, I mean, you know, look at her. I mean, she's still out there. She's still clapping for Nick. But she's not the type of person to interfere. She's not a, I mean, she, she can do some things outside of the ring, but knowing her as long as I've been at Southern Pride, she's not the type of person to interfere and make a difference in a match. She might slip racks nuts to somebody or whatever, but if she's not a Matt Hankins, or Dr. Brock with the loaded shoe, or Missy Hyatt with a Gucci bag. Uh, as she's out there at ringside. I don't know that she's gonna have Nick Halen win this matchup because of something she does. She might provide a distraction, that's for sure. But I don't know that she's the type to stop somebody, you know? We'll see. It may change here later in the match. We'll have to see how this thing goes, but there's certainly some between all three of these people right now. Of course, we talk about Todd Sexton starting his career, going out of the Texas Wrestling Academy, training under Shawn Michaels and Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Brought that knowledge back here to the Peach State and has been responsible for many men's careers. It's Nick Halen, Jeez. big atomic drop, following it up with a clothesline. And you can see the look on Nick Halen's face. He's enjoying this right now. He's stressed out a little bit, but he's enjoying this. His confidence has picked up ever so much after each blow, after each time he keeps Todd down. Yeah, look at him, just yelling at Todd, just talking at him right into his face right before he punches him. Oh, yeah. That's the end of the incident. Todd's telling him to come on and said, bring it. There you go. Halen with a boot right to the face, and Todd crumples down to the mat. You see Tristan Michaels heading over there to check on him and see where he's at. And Todd says he can continue. 
Todd's taking an enormous amount of punishment in this matchup from Nick Halen. Uh oh, Todd's got to cross things off in. Nick Halen able to get up real quickly, breaking the hold. Todd hit the ropes hard. And you see just the, the pain on the face of Todd Sexton. I mean, this has been physically and emotionally one of the roughest times of his life. I mean, you know, think about the last seven months, what, what Todd know, Sexton's been no through. Way. Is he trying to German suit? Both of these men are going to die if he German suplexes him off the ropes like that onto the floor. That's incredible. No way. Todd holding on with everything he's got to block that. Look at this. Look at the torsion and the strength it took. Super kick. Halen's out on the floor, Todd's out on the floor. Both men down, Tristan Michaels checking on him. And you gotta think that Todd Sexton does not want his last match to be a double count out. He does not want his last match to end this way. Absolutely Win or not. lose is one thing. Before to end this way, this is not how Sexton's career should end. No, it shouldn't end in a match like this, honestly, but this is what the situation calls for. This piece of garbage in, in his life. I mean, they're married, so who the hell knows at this point? I don't know, I don't ask those type of questions. But I mean, you know, this is going on. This is what's happening right now. Both of these men are getting counted out, and both men are back in the ring at the same time, Tristan Michaels doesn't have to ask for that belt right now. But you know, this, this shouldn't be this way. This should be a Kyle Matthews type of match or something like that. Look at this, these two men are slapping the hell out of each other. It should be a 20 minute, 30 minute masterpiece of a match. And that's not what we're gonna see here. We're gonna see two men beating the holy hell out of each other just because they hate each other. Todd tripped him up. Ran it in. And now has it locked in, that single leg crab. Is Halen gonna make the rope? Todd drags him back in. Oh, and goes in for the STF. Right across the bridge is the nose. Halen only has one leg free and one arm free to crawl. This is Oh, wow, look at that. And now turns it into the Sexton stretch. Roll over there, and another roll over. Two counts for each man here. Todd with a beautiful knee lift right to the jaw of Nick Halen. Todd turns to the crowd there as Halen takes the cobweb loose. I talked about the last seven months have probably been the most emotional seven months of Todd Sexton's life. He's endured so much. And tonight, it's all gonna come to an end one way or another. As Nick Halen just plants Todd there. Just Only a two count. Yeah, just a two count there, Halen. Hit that tornado face breaker there. On Sexton, working over the neck and the shoulders. That game breaker finisher for Nick Halen that Todd Sexton actually taught him. Oh, wait a He's minute. He's in the toolbox of Nick Halen for this matchup now. And Nick Halen's got Todd Sexton locked in the ropes. Look at this. Nick's right in his face. Just saw him. Look at the face. But look at Todd. Just the spite and the anger. There, Tristan Michaels counting him. Tristan pushes him off. What? You don't push Tristan. Oh, there you go, Todd. Tristan's back was turned, and Todd kicked the field goal. Down goes Halen. And this could be the opening that Todd Sexton needs. This could be the moment that Todd Sexton needs to take out all that anger, all that frustration of the man that walked out with his wife. And he trusted a friend of his, oh my God. Oh, Vincent Sexton, it's the game breaker. A move he taught Nick Halen. Oh yeah. 
What? How on earth did he kick out of that? I'm going to tell you something, Adam Vance. Once you've mastered a maneuver like the Game Breaker, a lot of times, and it's crazy here, it makes you almost impervious to it where you can kick out. And now, Todd Sexton, no doubt, setting up for a maneuver he learned down in San Antonio. Went for that kick, Halen caught it. Blake Sweet. Halen takes it in, Todd's up. Springboard crossbody with the hook of the legs, could this be it? Just a two count again, and Sexton's up. Sexton plants and goes for the cover again. Another quick two count. Tristan Michaels is earning his money tonight. Sexton trying to take him out. A game breaker didn't get a three count out of Nick Halen. What's he got to do? Both these men dishing out all kinds of punishment to each other. Todd heading out. Nick Halen's prone body there in the ring. Kelly Sexton screaming at Nick as Todd climbs those ropes. Nick Halen laying prone. What is the technician going to do? Oh, wait a minute. Went for the elbow drop, and Halen got the knees up. Went for the Macho Man elbow. You know who else we've been seeing use that elbow lately? Uh, that piece of trash in the ring, Nick Halen. Nick Halen's been using that flying elbow lately. Todd Sexton, of course, taking a book out of the Macho Man, but also just kind of just throwing the dagger. Oh, no and doubt. now the favor being returned. Nick Halen hit it. Todd Sexton is out. This might be it. What? How the hell did he kick out on that? It's like I told you earlier, a lot of times when you master a maneuver, you're almost impervious to it. I mean, it may lay you down and sting, but you're going to find a way out of it. Listen to this crowd. Halen now pounding away at the top of the head, pushing Tristan Michaels out of the way as well. You're about to get DQ'd, buddy. Tristan's letting it go because he wants to see Todd beat your ass too. Right now, Nick Halen perks on that top rope. Hits the elbow right to the heart of Todd Sexton. He's that was a going shot for a to the heart. Oh, wait a minute. Did you hear what Kelly just said to Nick? No, what was that? She said, that's enough. Todd's here in the ring, look at Kelly. Another elbow drop right to the chest. Another elbow drop from Halen. Todd's not even moving. No, Todd is. Nick keeps rolling him over. Arrogant. I'll finish it when I'm ready to finish it. I'm not done. I'm not done. It's not over. 
It's over when I say it's no, over. No, it's over. Come here. Todd is back up, up to his feet now. Super kick! He hit it! Can he pin Nick the grease balls face down in the canvas? Super kick! I don't think Todd's done with him yet. Oh, hell no. Not a chance. Todd's picking him up. Couple of words for him. Here comes that bookend you talked about. Beautiful pile driver for Todd Sexton. Michaels is down. And Todd pulls him up. A little more pain for you, Nick Halen. Yeah, you know, Todd Sexton, like I said, he's had a lot going on. And this is what he wants to do right now. He wants to dish out the punishment to Nick Halen. Dust till dawn, and this could be Dust setting in on this match for Nick Allen. He tapped out! He tapped out! Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner for the final time, the technician, Todd Sexton. And ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. and Mrs. Todd Sexton.
Javi, we want him. You want him. You can beat Judas. Arnold. June 4th at Shindig. His match, though, a, a, a casket match. <laughs> We're in the cemetery. I mean, what are we going to do? Are you Are you sure? Tranquilo. Tranquilo. Listen, slow down. It's okay. It's okay. I laid him out, like you said, not once, not twice, but thrice. <laughs> That's right. Again and again. And again, in Shindig, it's going to be no difference. No difference. It's not going to be facile. It's going to be very easy peasy, as you say. And that is easy, because you're numero uno. You're I, the champion. Numero <laughs> uno hombre of Southern Fried. Judas no longer wreaks havoc over Southern Fried anymore. Javier Reyes, the JBE, King. International, yes. does. We reign supreme so, over Southern Fried. There's just one last thing to do though, right? Look where we're at. A final nail, maybe? You can do it. It's ironic. <laughs> An empty plot. Yes. Because that shindig, Michael Judas, I will oh, yes. finally put the last nail in the coffin <laughs> of your Career. <laughs> Michael Judas, rest in peace. <laughs> Adios.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce the opponents in the casket match. Accompanied to the ring by the artistic director of JBE International, Dr. Joseph Brock III. And his client coming to the ring from Lima, Peru, weighing 270 pounds, the exotic import, Javier. And introducing his opponent. Can run on for a long Ladies and gentlemen, now making his way to the ring from the heart of darkness, time. you know him as a priest of punishment. This is Michael Judas! Go and tell that long tongue liar, go and tell that midnight rider, tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter, tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Well, my goodness gracious, let me tell you the news. My head's been wet with the midnight dew. I've been down on bended knee, talking to the man from Galilee. He spoke to me with a voice so sweet. I thought I heard the shuffle of angels sweet. He called my name and my heart stood still. When he said, John, go to my will, go tell that long tongue liar, go and tell that midnight rider, tell the rambler the guest. Long, slow, painful death is what may await young Javier Reyes as he stands across the ring from Michael Judas and Judas taking his sweet time coming to the ring and quite honestly caressing the coffin at ringside. Well, you know, and I'll tell you, you notice there's no referee inside the ring, but there's two referees outside. They will be manning the coffin here in this coffin match. Pretty much anything's gonna go in this one. I mean, it's the only way to win this match is to stuff your opponent into that coffin and close the lid. Uh-oh. Open-handed slap to the side of the face of the priest of punishment. And he's got his hands wrapped around the throat of Reyes and punching away at the stomach of Javier Reyes right now. I was in the um, the hallway area just outside the locker room earlier and I saw that coffin sitting there 
one of these fur face security guys asked me that I want to test it out. I said, I'm pretty sure that's coming pretty soon. I don't want to do it tonight. Not tonight there, Chief. Sorry about that. I think it's awful rude of Bull to ask that of you. It's really, it's not so out of character for him. Judas I've, there with a big clothesline in the corner. Sorry, we get back to the match here. Javier Reyes for the past few months has had the better of Michael Judas. No doubt. But now, there's no sneak attacks. There's no one going behind. It's not tag team action. This is one-on-one -on -one in Michael Judas' backyard, his kind of match. Absolutely here. This is what he uh, specializes in, is disabling your opponent enough where you can get that. Oh, my Lord. He got about eight feet up in the air right there, did Reyes. And he's asking, uh-oh. Dr. Brock's on top of the casket. He asked the referees to open the casket. And Dr. Brock's closing the casket and holding it tight. Doc Brock better be careful. He may be on the inside of that casket with Reyes very soon. Well, you know, he, he does love his, uh, his clients. Oh, Reyes with a shot there with that second rope right to the groin. And he is trying to put Judas in the casket right now. The coffin, excuse me. Have you ever been in a coffin no. there? Nope, nope, I'm good. I can't even watch like movies where people are stuck in tunnels and stuff. No, I can't even do that. I That's mean, not something I want to do. You got to think about. I mean, the psychological part of this of just the thought of being in that coffin. Oh, Judas out again has him. Samoan drop there from Reyes. At this point, you go for a cover in a regular match, but he's got to put Judas in that casket. And there it is Reyes. open. He's got to roll the near 300 pounder over to that casket and get him up and over and into it and close the lid. He's very close. Is Judas taller than the casket? Hold on. He's got Reyes by the throat again. You can hear the crowd here in Monroe, Georgia, in support of Judas. Shoulder tackles from Reyes in the corner. Pounding away at the core of the big man. There have been very few people here in Southern Fried Championship Wrestling and in the state of Georgia that has improved in the past 365 days like Javier Reyes has. We've seen a new man in here. He's trimmed down, he's put on some muscle, and now he's in there standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with a three-time former Southern Fried Heavyweight Champion. You're right, he is taking it to Judas right now. Judas has rocked those big elbows there. Into the corner, and the top rope is holding Judas up at this point. Reyes is taking his sweet time. That might be a bad idea. Oh, cutter. Oh. Did you see that? He turned that choke slam into a cutter there. And he's asking and signaling for that casket to get opened up again. And a lot of that is the skills that Reyes has developed over the past year. We don't know how long he's had Dr. Brock in his ear who's been helping him out. We don't know if that was a relationship that was established prior, but Reyes right now, this would be a huge feather in his cap and would be a huge moment going forward here in Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. Nice, nice kick from Judas. Judas probably can smell the inside of that casket, knowing that he's that close there on the offensive to try and keep Reyes from putting him in there. But Reyes and Dr. Brock, you know, you saw Reyes and Drew Blood, you know, have a dog collar match at one point here. And Drew Blood was a client, one of the biggest clients that JBE had at that time. 
and these men have been opponents and they've been on opposite sides of the ring of each other and the respect level has always been there, I'm sure. And Dr. Brock has seen what he can do and now the change like you talked about earlier in the body and the mindset and the physical ability, the toolbox has gotten bigger for Javier Reyes. That's changed and now he's main eventing. This could be the final match of this show if it needed to be. I speak from experience. I have been in the ring one-on-one -on -one with Javier Reyes at Crossroads last year. Yes. If he cinches that choke hold in, if he cinches that submission hold in on Michael Judas, I predict it'll be all over and Judas will be leaving the Boys and Girls Club in Monroe, Georgia in a coffin. He hit those three two Kaedas on Judas and Judas didn't get up. And Judas sends Reyes into the barricade at ringside. These two guys are going at it hard. And Judas is taking out his revenge. But Dr. Brock there. Reyes, you could hear, writhing in pain there for a moment as Judas picked him up. Judas might very well put him in the casket. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know how smart that was on the Doctor, part of Dr. Brock. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. Dr. Brock, though, saved his client from being close to that, that coffin getting put in. That's a smart move there from Dr. Brock. Dr. Brock's in the ring now. Dr. Brock is hiding in the casket. I, now, just to be perfectly clear, that does not end this matchup. It has to be Javier Reyes or Michael Judas. But, hey, not a smart move. If Dr. Brock's in the casket, you can't put Reyes on top of him and close the lid. You go tell Michael Judas he can't do that. I'm going to go tell Dr. Brock because that's a great way to win this matchup. Dr. Brock apparently is uh, not wanting to speak to Michael Judas, and he is headed to the back now. Judas into the barricade gets whipped in hard by Reyes there again at the ringside area, and you see the carnage. Judas is sprawled out on the floor. But, you know, that could have been the plan all the time because it took Judas' attention away from Javier Reyes, oh. and now Reyes – has the, oh, what's he doing? He's putting the casket in the ring now. He's gonna have to lift Judas up instead of roll him in now. Well, actually, if he stands Judas up on a vertical base, he just has to push him over into it. One punch, maybe be all it takes. Maybe this is a lot smarter than having it outside the ring. I don't know, man. We we'll have to see what this what what sense this ends up making. I don't know why you'd put that casket in the ring, but we'll see. And right now, has him hooked in. Front. Front face lock into a DDT there, right in the middle of the ring. And Judas again is out. And Reyes is celebrating. Almost mocking Judas in that celebration, outstretching the arms. Right now, this could be just a matter of time for the priest of punishment to be read his last rites. Ray is going after reaching out and, and touching his back there as he tries to pull Judas across the ring. Again, that's 300 pounds of just dead weight right now. He's got Judas over the coffin and Judas elbows out of the way. Oh, he's Reyes. got the first part hooked in. Can Reyes get Judas in? This Judas. is what I told you about. This is what yes. I was talking about.
That arm fell. Judas's arm fell. He is out. He's put to sleep. All Reyes has to do is get his legs in. Judas might be too big for the casket. It's got to close. Yeah, it's got to close all the way, too. Judas's hand is on the outside. Pushing up on it. Reyes can't close that door. And right now it's a test of wills and strength. He took a second to jaw at the crowd again, and Judas has it blocked again. Both hands on the lid. Judas pushes off and sits up. And Javier Reyes has seen a ghost. Reyes climbing the ropes. Judas going after him again, and Reyes, oh. The family jewels take a shot there from Reyes. Judas is going to set him up here. He might hit the casket, honestly. He's got El Crucifejo down. He's in, lid's closed. That is it. The Priest of Punishment Ladies has vanquished. And the winner of the match, Michael Judah. Javier Reyes now has vanquished him and he is victorious here.
evidence this evening? So I'm a rebel and rogue and I'm always on the run With a fire inside, I ain't ever gonna die I'm a locked and loaded gun When the match is striking, the gasoline lights It's only just begun One thing I learned is you could watch it all burn But the flame ain't ever done Ooh. Ooh. Raise them up a little higher Introducing one half of Happy Madness from Philadelphia. This is Sunny Days. And in the other corner to my left, his partner from Los Angeles, California, Sal Renaro! tag team partner, the owner of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling, David Manders! As he lost his mind, can he see or is he blind? Is he Team Manders, I guess, uh, Manders and Sal and Sonny getting ready to step in the ring with the Undeniable as they you know, slide this, into the ring here. Yeah, go ahead. This is something that's been boiling over for months and months now. It really came to a head during the Funhouse matchup between the Undeniable and Happy Madness, and that's when we saw what the undeniable did to our matchmaker, Bill Behrens. And right now, the bell has rung. And this is a six-man war. There's not going to be a lot of wrestling in this one. This is a fight. We've seen David Manders in fights before. 
and Matt Hankins takes an early exit outside the ring. That might be the smart move there, honestly. Sal and Sonny sending. That was Brian Blaze into the clothesline of David Manders and Manders with a second clothesline on Shane Marks. And uh, this is gonna be mayhem, honestly. David Manders has always admitted he's no professional wrestler, but the man is a fighter and he had come dressed to fight tonight. Blue jeans, cowboy boots, and a cutoff shirt. Oh yeah, everyone's wearing that same getup. Look at Sal, look at Sonny. They're all dressed like Manders right now. And what about the mind games they were playing earlier with the undeniable? The undeniable former Southern Fried Tag Team Champions defeat the team of Happy Madness for those championships. And right now trying to get two men from each team on the apron, one man from each team in the ring, so we can start this six-man match. Fans are chanting chicken at the undeniable as they regroup and try and figure out some way to come back in this matchup after the horrendous start here so far. Looking bad for the undeniable. Manders, Renaro working over the chicken wings. Sunny days as well. The undeniable not liking that one bit. The undeniable not too quick to get into the ring for this one. And we all know that Sal Renaro is not really all here. Oh no. It's called evil genius is what it is. Sal always messing with Tristan Michaels. The always vocal crowd here quick to voice their displeasure with the undeniable at any opportunity that they can get. Well, no doubt, you know, we talked earlier about how bad this crowd hates the exotic youth. It's even more so for this trio here. They have not made themselves welcome in Southern Fried at all, not one bit. Oh, Sal has just ejected Tristan Michaels, the referee from the matchup. Now, for those of you at home that may not know, Sal does not have that kind of power. Sal does not have the authority to do that. Finally, all three men outside the ring now. Tristan Michaels trying to inform the rules. Tristan's looking at us like we can do something. I'm not sure what the hell's going on. Tristan, you're the referee. All right, Sal is in the ring. The Undeniable coming out to a portion of the Miami Vice theme song. And Sal Renaro is not taking his sunglasses off since. Well, you know, he wears his sunglasses at night. I guess so. Blaze going after him with a kick and roll up there from Sal. And another timeout request from the Undeniable. They have uh, not seen the wrestling rule book, apparently. Blaze in the corner getting a hug from his table mates. Sal Renaro with a backslide. Never has a three count occurred off a of backslide in pro wrestling ever. Ever? Ever, I can't get, maybe a ladies match, who knows. Something Joyce Grable might have done in the 20s. And right now, just working on that arm of Brian Blaze is Sal Renaro. Yep, wrenching that shoulder, that elbow, that wrist. Wrenching it in there and Blaze is in some serious pain. 
You know, and don't get me wrong about Sal Renaro. He is a very complicated man. Once you peel back all these layers of the craziness and the mind games, you are dealing with a very dangerous technical professional wrestler. This man can do a little bit of everything, but he loves to play the mind games. He is a wrestling genius. That arm drag perfection right there sending Blaze. Blaze might have him by 80 to 100 pounds. And Sal just flipped him over like it wasn't anything. Sunny Days put the sunglasses back on him that Blaze knocked off. And here comes uh, the horsepower of this, of this match up here. Sunny Days taking the boots to Brian Blaze as well. Still working over that left arm. Sauronaro, 22 plus years experience as a pro, has held titles all over the world. Former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. And just comes crashing out on the arm of Brian Blaze. Tristan Michael yelled at Matt Hankins for no reason. Neither one of these teams were made available for media earlier today. Usually we, meaning me and you Vance, we have an opportunity to interview some of the guys, but these six men were not available to Ooh. us. No doubt planning over this matchup. Yep. David Manders, you saw around here earlier tonight, walking around and talking to the fans as they filled out the arena here in Monroe, Georgia. And right now, Sal Renaro in the wrong side of town there with the undeniable being held back. And right now, referee Tristan Michaels trying to keep Sunny Days out, but he's hurting his partner more than anything as Matt Hankins and Brian Blaze were choking out Sal Renaro there in the corner. The shenanigans have begun in the corner now as Sal is in a bad spot right now. Sonny and Manders trying to wait to get into this matchup here. Tristan Michaels checking to make sure that doesn't turn into a chokehold. It is a sleeper right now. The sociopath Brian Blaze. In there with Sal Renaro. You mentioned earlier 80 to 100 pounds. Yeah. Oh, but right there, a jawbreaker breaks out that sleeper hold. And Sal carried to the corner of the undeniable once again. And Shane Marks makes his way into the matchup. That was the power you were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. And now Shane Marks has Sal Renaro on his knees. Driving elbow right to the back of the neck. Sonny and Manders trying to get into the matchup to save their tag team partner. Look at Shane Marks just making fun of Sal, trying to crawl to his tag team corner to make that tag. And Shane is locking in that jaw. Vice right now on the jaw of string of Sal Renaro. Sal's not gonna tap out there, but like I said, Tristan Michaels is checking it. Right there on top of things as always. One of the best in the business right there for sure. And you know that Matt Hankins has not legally been in this matchup as of yet. You're right there. Letting his undeniable handle business here. That's the smart move right there on behalf of Hankins for sure. Springboard from Sal. Double stunner for Sal Renaro. Can he make the tag? But the only person there to tag is David Manders. 
Sunny Days is still down on the floor. Sal makes a tag. Manders is in. Hankins is tagged in. He's the only one. They're the only two that can step into the ring for their teams. Oh, wait a minute. Matt Hankins. I don't know if he wants any more, David. You know, Manders looks good. He's slimmed down quite a bit. Manders is Hankins. Oh, look at this. Oh, hell. Suckered him in. Sonny gets punched and knocked off the apron. He's down on the floor. Sauer Naro is out somewhere on the floor as well. What do they have planned for David Manders here? Trying to keep Happy Madness out of the ring. You see Sonny there. Wow, Matt's got a sleeper hole locked in, sort of. I don't know if breaking that sleeper hold was smart. I mean, he was actually putting Manders out. Oh, man. Hank is just... Hankins is punching the hell out of Manders, and Manders in the wrong corner. David Manders. Oh, wait a minute. Up and over. Sal dropped a blaze out to the floor. So goes Shane Marks as well. You can see Marks there on the far right side of the camera. But Hankins is still working over Manders in the corner and celebrating even though his men are outside the ring. Sal and Sonny trying to get Manders to make the tag. We saw these two men just a couple weeks ago in a street fight. Big boot there by Hankins. Oh, wait a minute, Manders opening up. Oh, Manders with a shot to Hankins' jaw. Sal in the corner. Matt Hankins screen there, Sonny's coming in. Head of steam, chest first, and Hankins is a bag of broken bones right now. Manders undoing the wrist tape. Oh, look like he's undoing his wrist tape. Manders is getting the train ready. All aboard! The Menders Express! Oh, wait a minute! Whoa. Referee Tristan Michaels pulled into the corner. Are you kidding me? Sal and Sonny know the referee's hurt. Blaze pulls Sal out. Sonny's pulled out with Marks. And Sonny's into the barricade. Tristan, yeah. We got a lot going on here. David Manders getting beat down by Matt Hankins in the ring. Hankins is stomping at Manders' right hand. Broken in that street fight against Matt Hankins. You don't know that there, but, but Manders has a broken hand. He came out fighting for that. We didn't want that to come out public knowing that, but as this match is continuing, looks like they're focusing on that taped hand. They might have figured that out somehow. Sonny's getting choked out by Shane Marks. And they've got the steel chair around David Manders hand and wrist and the undeniable are taking advantage of Tristan Michaels being knocked out. Oh, Hankins stomped that chair flat and Manders hands gotta be busted. Yeah, I don't know what happened right there, but I mean, you know, don't know if it broke it again or not, but definitely not in good shape. David Manders, writhing in pain. More referees have come out. The undeniable laying waste to Happy Madness outside the ring. Manders is getting help to the back. As the fight continues, is undeniable. Working over Sal and Sonny right now. 
with Matt Hankin screaming instructions to them here at ringside. And Manders is headed to the back right now with an injury for sure. You are officially on the undeniable's time. Ain't no referee, ain't nobody can do a damn thing to stop us from beating these two to death. And guess what? It's your fault. You made us like this. And I'm going to sit right here in my ring and I'm going to enjoy it. He handed the microphone there to Brian Blaze, and Blaze hits Sal with it. Matt Haggins is going to sit down and take a seat on that solid steel chair. Sunny days, that paint. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. This match is now no disqualification. What the? And I've found a replacement for David Manning. <laughs> Bitch. What the? Oh my God. It's the graveyard villa, Phil Barron. Oh! Phil Barron's going right to Matt Hankins. Matt Hankins there. It was there. the undeniable that put Bill Barron's out for the past few weeks. And now, Bill Barron's. Is that a Swiffer? That's a Swiffer. Oh! Oh my God! Right into Mark's groin. I guess you could say it was a Swiffer to the Family Jewels. Here comes Brian Blaze. Oh, wait a minute. He's got a. Well, he's got a keyboard. Oh! Oh! Blaze gets one in the head there. Oh my God, he's got a staple gun. Oh, oh. Bill Barron's with a staple gun tonight. He's begging for Hankins to come into the ring. There's Manders. Manders is back. He's sending Hankins into the ring. Barron's with the guitar. He misses as Hankins is there. Well, Sal and Sonny. Oh. Stunner. We're turning. Oh! A shot right to the head. Oh, 
pay in tribute to his long lost friend, New Jack. We lost a year ago. Bill Barron stepping on the carcass of Matt Hankins. As Hankins is laying there, Manders stepping over Matt Hankins. We got that casket still, I think. So we can bring that out for Matt Hankins now. As he's heading to the back. The undeniable losers in this six-man tag match. As Sunny Days uses the Swiffer to send Hankins off to the locker room area. did not hit it all the way and a second one there and that kills David Ali ladies and gentlemen your winner in the match and new southern fun heavyweight champion Adrian Congratulations, Adrian, up. Oh, congratulations. You're, you stepped up, you had an opportunity, you took it on yourself, and you became champion. You have a match promoted for tonight, and you're going to wrestle again. Ladies and gentlemen, let me please introduce at this time his opponent, Billy Buck. This is for the title! Billy Buck, Shindig, June 4th. You're putting your heavyweight title on the line. I say your heavyweight title, and I'm leaving that loosely because you won it in a very dishonorable way. It, it's intriguing because, look, you're this guy that's all for the people. You're this common man that does everything by the book, and yet the way he won this championship, it's just, it's not like you, Buck. You know what's a disgrace? It's a disgrace that these people have to hear your voice. June the 4th, that Sunday, I want you to bring everything you've got, because I'm not being a common man than my actions. Speak louder than my words. You see?
last time you say it was a flute that I won? The only thing that's going to be a flute, Adrian, is when I kick your teeth down the throat. Let me remind you, Buck, when you were in the background, I was on the front line. I was the one taking the oh, shot. No, I was no. the one getting hit. Because when everybody, everybody stepped back, I stepped off. That's right, Adrian. June the 4th at Shindig, I'm going to do one thing. And that's going to come in there, and I am going to walk out as the Southern Fried Heavyweight Champion. Billy Bob, I hope you're ready. I hope you have everything lined up. Because at Shindig, your reign, your mediocre reign as Southern Fried Heavyweight Champion will come to an end. And I will once again be your champion. And I will be on top. Gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Southern Fried Heavyweight Championship.
gentlemen, this contest scheduled for one fall with a 60 minute time limit is for the Southern Fried Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first to my right, he is a 17 year pro who in that time has captured the Southern Fried Tag Team titles two times. Two times he has been the Southern Fried Heavyweight Champion. Tonight, he is your challenger. This is Adrian Hawkins. And his opponent, this 19-year pro, has held numerous championships throughout the Southeast. Tonight, for the second time, he is your reigning and defending Southern Fried Heavyweight Champion, Wild Billy Bob! Your referee, Mr. Wait, Dean. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. John the Body Johnson, on this glorious night in Monroe, Georgia, I come bearing gifts. I promised you that CT Keys will be a part of this Southern Fried Heavyweight Championship bout, and I come to deliver on my promise. D. Byers, your services are no longer leaving. Get out of here. Bye. The referee for tonight's contest will be C. T. Key. Well, Jagged promised that CT Keys would have some influence in this matchup. Well, we were promised that CT Keys was going to make his way into this matchup somehow. Uh, C.T. Keys was there, and he is now the referee. Does he have a license? I'm joined now by Jagged Edge, Southern Fried Hall of Famer here. C.T. Keys in this matchup now as the referee. Adam Vance, C.T. Keys has every qualification to run any position in Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. All right. Well, I mean, you know, he's not going to come out as a referee for this matchup if he doesn't have a license. I'm just, I'm just shocked that this is how he is involved listen, in this matchup here right now. This is a perfect opportunity for CT Keys. See, at the end of this match, only two of the three men in that ring are gonna matter. The winner and CT Keys. Yep, at our next event, maybe, who knows? We'll have to see here. We have a we have two two time Southern Pride champions here in the matchup right now. Adrian Hawkins is looking to become the second three time Southern Bride champion next to Michael Judas who we saw earlier tonight and Billy Buck hopes to retain that title as well. What? So collar and elbow tie up to start out and a big shoulder tackle from Billy Buck there and Adrian Hawkins who has his face and Billy Buck's face on the rear end of his tights and his knee pads and a Southern Fried Championship belt across the front. Now you watch my guy, he's gonna call it straight down the middle. That is what you do. This is a perfect opportunity for him to be in the ring with two experienced wrestlers, two former champions, and learn them. They know each other, so while he's in there, he's gonna see every weakness, because these two guys are gonna battle it out. They know each other's weaknesses, they know each other's strengths, and by him being there, he'll be able to see the fear on their faces. Something like being in the ring. 
Oh, no doubt. There's nothing like being in there. I remember when I was working with NW Atlanta and we had a training school. That's one of the things that we had the trainees do was to be in the match. Not saying CT Keys is a trainee by no by stretch no of the imagination. Means, watch your mouth. Absolutely. But to be in there as a referee is part of learning uh, what you do as a training referee. Uh, excuse me, as a training wrestler. It's now a good got, way to learn. You got to understand, you're talking about Billy Buck and Adrian Hawkins. These oh, yeah. guys are, are really good workers. No These doubt. guys are really good. Billy Buck is going to be the out, most outstanding champion for the short reign that he has. Adrian Hawkins, if he was to regain the title, his reign would be just as short. I have said it before. You're looking at the new face of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling, and that face belongs to C.T. Key. Now you got a question here. Pink pants. The pink is the signature color for Adrian Hawkins in the approved. Is there some type of a level there where you guys have an agreement with Hawkins if he wins this match somehow? You know, sometimes you don't tell all your secrets. There? I plead the fifth. All right. I plead the fifth. Fair enough. Keys is letting these guys go. He's telling me he doesn't get paid by the hour. We're going to call it straight down the middle. What you see is what you get. Valuable experience is being learned by my client right now. Also, right now. you have to worry about Bobby Moore. Whether we or not don't he have to here. worry about Nick Bobby Moore. Is here. I'm discussing the matchup. I know that you don't, obviously, but you got to think the other two members of the approved are both in the building here tonight. And whether or not they're going to get involved in this matchup is another thing. Buck is punching the hell out of, out of Hawkins here right now. Nice job. That's going to be a Billy Buck problem. Our job is to call it straight down the middle. We go CT Keys pushing Billy Buck as Hawkins in the corner. Hawkins with a reversal. Buck with a huge clothesline there sends him right down to the canvas again. And once again, learning. We saw a tribute earlier tonight to the great Jimmy Rave by Todd Sexton during his match. And under the learning tree of Jimmy Rave, Adrian Hawkins has learned to do this in a match Absolutely. when he gets in trouble. Smart move. Stop the damn match. Slow down the pace. Absolutely. Take time to gather up. Take nothing away from Adrian Hawkins. Absolutely. Take time to gather up your thoughts and go back into the ring. You stop the momentum. You regroup. You go over it again. He's looking at you right now. I don't know what he's looking at me for. He needs to concentrate on Billy Buck. He wants the championship. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Buck brings him in the hard way here, going for a quick pin. One count. You're not going to beat him that easy. Whew. Side headlock takeover. Billy Buck can bring it to you any way you take it to him. He can wrestle you, and he'll take you to a fight. Head scissors from Hawkins, and he's got out of that hold. He's slapping the back of Billy Buck's head. Your man is right there on top of things. Calling it straight Making down the sure middle. Making sure the shenanigans are not going to happen here. Look at CT Keys. He's just a perfect specimen. He's the perfect guy to be the face of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. The body of an NFL linebacker, the quickness of a wide receiver or cornerback, the agility of a gymnast, it's all in that package that C.T. Keys has. You know, they say that most teams take on the attitude of their coach. <laughs> Look at C.T.'s coach. Oh, yeah. Big back body drop there, and Hawkins landed right on Billy Buck's face after that shot. And he's headed back out to the floor again. There's a look at those trunks I talked about a few minutes ago. This is a very good strategic move on Adrian Hawkins' part. Stop the momentum when Buck gets going. You can see. You see what's happened to the approved here earlier tonight with Kelly leaving out of here with Todd again. Hawkins pulling their keys to starting that 10 count. He's keeping Billy Buck out of there. Oh man, Hawkins sends Buck spine first into the barricade. Uh oh. Hawkins is trying to dunk. Oh God. Oh. Buck went stomach first right across the barricade. Notice how my guys allowing them to work. 
He's not getting in the way like most referees. He was, uh, this is too much is on the line Hawkins. for him to step in. Great move by Jesus. Adrian Hawkins. Very great. I mean, it's incredible there. Hawkins with a big elbow off the apron, and Billy Buck was prone across that barricade there and took that elbow right to the back of his head. The fans again trying to start an Adriana chant. This is great action. These guys are really intense. Like I said, they know each other. They've been on the same side of the aisle. They've been on the opposite. These guys know each other. You're going to get a great match here. It's going to be valuable experience for CT Keys because, like I said it before, it's only going to be two guys that matter at the end of this match, and that's going to be the winner and CT Keys. The loser will go to the back of the line. Hawkins there with a boot right to the back of the head, excuse me, of the uh, shoulders there, holding Buck down. All that weight of Hawkins. There you go, Keys pulls him off of Hey, him. he was about to keep him from di being disqualified. He did Adrian a favor. He no was doubt. at the count of four. Uh, Buck with a punch right to the side of the head. These two men again trading blows right in the center of the ring and wobbly legs underneath Adrian Hawkins right now. Hawkins with a bulldog-like drive with the forehead right of, of Billy Buck right in that second turnbuckle. And Hawkins taking his time, letting Billy Buck soak in the pain a little bit there as he tries to recover from what's happened to him the last few minutes. Elbow dropped to those shoulders. No approval needed. That finishing move that Adrian Hawkins hits, snaps the head and the neck. And working over that shoulder in the back of the neck for Billy oh, Buck. there we go is gonna be what it takes to put him down for that three count here later in the matchup. Hawkins is trying to soften him up for that. Hawkins does not need to give Buck a break. Hawkins again hiding it. Keys knows what he's doing. Of course he does. Keys and Hawkins talking. Hawkins set Buck up. Shot right to the chest. And Hawkins is in control of the matchup here. We may have a new we champion. We may have a new champion. Buck kicked out there. Hawkins doesn't know what to do. Buck's not going to give it up that easy. Oh, no. Adrian's going to have to stay on him. Slow and methodical pace here to start out the matchup as Hawkins is working over Buck and slapping the face. Billy Buck jawing at him there. Buck in the corner of the fan starting a Billy Buck chant. Billy with a reversal. Hawkins up over the top and Buck is uh, Trying to regain his Nice senses. move. Oh, Billy flipped it. One, oh. two. Nice. Hawkins kicked out real quick there. Nice knee. Nice oh. knee. Big running knee right to the jaw. And Buck maybe knocked out there over the bottom rope. Now, if there's any question about if uh -oh. my guy was going to call it straight down the middle, you just witness it. Now, what Adrian Hawkins is doing, he's costing himself. He cannot complain if Billy comes back because he's costing, he needs to be on Billy, not worry about CT. CT's calling it straight down the middle. Again, Hawkins wrenching at that neck. Over the rope, that's the reason why CT broke it. Oh yeah, he's Five out count. of there. He's out of there, you're right. Not a smart move there, letting Buck get back to his feet. But Buck had to use his own energy to make it up, and that's a little less gas in the tank for the champion. Hawkins with a couple of shots right to the side of the head. And he's heading up to the high red district right now. Looks like he's gonna try for a suplex. Billy's fighting out. Billy's trying to get him off of there. These two guys trading punches in the corner. Adrian needs Hawkins to cut him off before the fans oh, get. Oh, holy nice crap. Move. 
Oh Hawkins is gosh. out. Landed right on the floor there. I can't believe that. Man, I thought Billy had tossed him to the second row. Hawkins may be out. Hawkins went flying. I don't know what he did there, but he's almost like he was jumping. Keys has got to start a 10 count here. There we go. He's got it going. Oh, yeah. Hawkins trying to make his way back up to his feet. He landed hard. He hit the corner of the ring on the way down and then the floor after that and Keys is up to five. And the challenger makes his way back into the ring. Billy Buck with those punches. Now one thing Adrian's gonna have to stay away from is that super kick. I've been on the other end of that thing. Man, that buckshot is the uh, is the finisher. It's the, it's the final credits well, of this I've movie. I've been on the end of that one. Oh yeah. Yeah, and Keys with a two count there, like you said, right down the middle again. Buck makes his way back up to his feet here as Hawkins is shaking the cobwebs loose again. Billy Buck feeds off this crowd and the love yes, that they does. have for him, for sure. Hawkins taking a moment to try and beg off. Another Jimmy Rave patented move there. Man, it looks Whoa. like, oh, damn, Buck. Shoulder man. first. Hit hard on that The turn whole bubble. ring shook. And the ring post there as Buck went in that left shoulder. Oh, that, but that's the Billy I know. Oh, yeah. Straight down the middle, two count, two and a half. Just, just a little bit from being three. That CT is, is right straight there. down the middle. You got him. Fans again chanting for Billy Buck. He makes his way up. There you go, Hawkins, headbutt right into that injured shoulder. Is he gonna get him turned around? No. DDT, oh, there we go. There we go. Two and a half count there from referee CT Keys and Buck exhausted, doesn't believe it though, but it's a beautiful, beautiful spine buster that Billy Buck has and uh, he hit that hard, but that left arm hurting him. I'm sure it cut down on how much power he had. Are they talking about my guy? Billy Buck going to the top rope. What on earth? Oh! Buck he went missed. for a moonsault and He took it. it. Yeah, he went for it all right there. That may cost Billy in this match. He went for it all. I don't think I've ever seen a Billy Buck moonsault. I don't think I have either. He's pulling out all the stops. Big jumping clothesline let's from go, Hawkins. Let's go, let's go. Look at the desperation in Hawkins, how fast he uh -huh. is to get over there for that pin in the grunt. Out of his stomach there when he heard that just a two count. Counts Keys. were consistent all oh. the way across the board for Billy and for Adrian, straight down the middle. He's learning a lot. Hawkins is slowly gathering Billy Buck up. Going for an unprettier here again, a second one. Attempted there, Buck gets out of it. Drops Hawkins on his He's feet, Hawkins him. back on the attack again. Oh, he planted him with that one. This may be it, this may be it. Buck slipped out a little bit there. Again, just a two count, going for it again. Almost, almost had him, almost had him. Buck's not even kicking out. He's just barely able to get his shoulders up. You see Hawkins again growing frustrated with what's happening here in this matchup. That's where you never want to be. Adrian is, is frustrated. He's not thinking, he's frustrated. As he screamed out, what do I have to do? You have to keep his shoulders down for three. It's that simple, but it's that hard. Hawkins is pulling the knee pad down. Gonna try for that code breaker here. No approval needed. If he hits this, this may be it. Oh, and the buck shot out of nowhere. 
the buck shot out of nowhere. This may be it. Can he cover him though? This Bucks may be it. it to his feet. Oh hell! What? <clears throat> Keys just trucked Billy Buck. I will talk to you later, Mr. Vance. Get playing the your man. Absolutely disgusted at what I've just seen here. CD Keys has left. Billy Buck in the ring. There's no referee to count now. Keys is headed to the back. He left the referee's shirt in the ring. He's headed to the back. Buck and Hawkins are in the ring together right now. Both men out. Hawkins has a hand on Buck. Byers is back out. Buck gets the shoulder up at the last second. Hawkins growing super frustrated right now with what's going on, but we actually have a real referee out here that's not going to kill anybody in the ring with a move. And Hawkins is pulling the other knee pad down as Billy Buck lights out right now for Billy Buck trying to make his way back up to his feet. Buck has Hawkins down, figure four coming. Billy Buck has the figure four locked in as Hawkins gonna tap. Billy Buck has the figure four locked in. Hawkins is tapping! I'd like to thank Kermit for our ring announcing here tonight as Billy Buck retains the Southern Fried Heavyweight Championship. CT Keys is back in the ring now, and he's got the Southern Fry belt. He just hit Billy Buck, and he's got the belt. Billy Buck's going after him now. He can barely walk. He's headed to the back. But Billy Buck has retained the Southern Fry championship tonight against Adrian Hawkins. More to come after this for sure. You pig-brained hillbilly, Jacob Ashworth. You want to fight Tank in a no-holds-barred match? Well, I told you to remember that every day you had could be your last good day. And on June 3rd, that's going to be your last good day because on June the 4th, in Monroe, Georgia, you face one of the deadliest monsters in the history of the sport. The bloodbath behemoth, he will claim you, Jacob, and all like you. Revenge is painful. Revenge is bitter. And there's old wounds that have long, long, long not been closed but they're about to be, and when he's done with you, your carcass is gonna end up here.
was a kid with a dream. Dream of going big places, doing big shows. But now I had to come back home. I had to come back home to where it all began. To where our paths first crossed. And try to remember, or at least think about why it's come to this, where we are now. I've watched you over the years, all the brutality, all of the men you've left laying in a puddle of blood throughout this country. Oh, I've watched. But all I gotta wonder is, why me? When come Shindig, I'm not your runner anymore. Come Shindig, June 4th, I'm not the referee anymore. And come in Monroe, Georgia, June 4th at Shindig, I'm definitely not the little kid sweeping up the floors anymore begging for a spot. Because it's Shindig, Tank, all the questions in my head will no longer be bothering me at night. No longer keeping me up wondering why. Because it's Shindig, Tank, I answer the questions like a man and confront my fears man to man. Come Shindig, June 4th in Monroe, Georgia, we'll see who's left late. Georgia weighed 270 pounds. 
the unstoppable Jacob Ashworth. It's called discipline. Turn me into a gentleman. But if they try to rob me, it'll be the end of it. I got my Bible, my rifle right here beside me. Talk to God nightly, so my survival is likely. Yeah. They talking about taking my gun. Hell no. They say you won't be spanking your son. Hell no. They taking prayer out of the schools. I'm telling y'all, I ain't going for it. No. Hell no. They talking about taking my gun. Hell no. They say you won't be spanking your son. Hell no. They taking prayer out of the schools. Reverend Dan outside the ring in his robe. I'm not sure what church he's in charge of, but Tank is an absolute legend in the Southeast. And you know something, Adam Vance, there's a lot of history that goes back into this. No doubt. When Tank was destroying bodies in the landmark arena for Anarchy Wrestling back in 06, Jacob Ashworth was just getting his start. Yeah. Jacob Ashworth was a runner for all of the, the different wrestlers. He was security, eventually became a referee. We don't know exactly where this bad blood came from, from the Reverend Dan Wilson and Tank onto Jacob Ashworth, but nonetheless, it is there. Oh, no doubt. I mean, for all the stuff that's happened here and for this to happen like this tank has some kind of he's got the chain on the far side of the ring wrapped around ashworth's throat man look at ashworth's neck it's already red so tank and ashworth going at it here right now like he said in the the video that you saw before this match that you know he grew up watching tank and being out there as a, as a kid just like his own son comes to these matches and watches this stuff. Oh my God, what is Ashworth having to do? He had something he was going after Tank with it. It looks like he hit him in the forehead. Ashworth found a fork, it looks like. There was a long period of time when the Reverend Dan Wilson and Tank, as members of the Devil's Rejects, Look at ran rough shot all over wrestling throughout the state of Georgia and the Southeast. Tank became one of the most feared men. That's why he is the godfather of Southern Deathmatch Wrestling. This man has shed more blood than any one competitor that I could think of right offhand. But Jacob Ashworth, he's not backing down. He's going right after Tank, right for this one. Ashworth is out there right now with a fork in his hand. That's something I never thought I would see out of Jacob Ashworth. He's already taken to the tank. He's got a tank busted open already. Jacob Ashworth knew exactly what he had to do. He knew exactly what he had to do to get in here and take this to tank. And that's what he's doing. He's going to a different place that he's never been quite before. I mean, we've seen him in brawls, but this right here, he is trying to take tank out in the playground. Oh, no doubt. He's got a tank thrown across the top of the barricade choking Tank out right now. Ashworth has all the ability in the world to win a wrestling matchup against anybody, but when you have this man like this that can go to those dark places and hurt people, Jacob Ashworth has got to get to that point, and he started out the match that way. He's got to. Tank's not expecting it, I'm sure. Ashworth has that guitar from earlier, and he just destroyed Tank with it. And Tank is a boot to the midsection for Ashworth. Table there at ringside, the casket was on earlier. Gets a taste of Jacob Ashworth's forehead on its own. And here's what's left of that guitar. Oh my word. That just exploded and a cackle came out of Dan. Yeah, and that didn't just echo here in the Boys and Girls Club, that echoed throughout Walton County. That went back to Cornelia, man. And Royston. Tank has the ring bell there, I believe. Pushing that into the head of Jacob Ashworth. That might have been the keyboard earlier, sorry. 
I don't know. I couldn't tell. Maybe that was what Bill brought out. Oh, no, that was the bell. That was the bell. All right. Oh, Jesus. Right now, you can see. Look at that skull that Dan brought out as well. Ashworth, a couple of shots there with that guitar. As Tank had another piece of some type of a weapon there as well, and he rolled Ashworth in. Ashworth is busted open now because of the uh oh tank has some i can't tell what tank has in his hands right now no that is some kind of implement of destruction oh lord tank oh i've seen this this is not good tank has a handful of like skewers like what you'd use to cook some food with and he is hammering those into jacob ashworth's head Oh, God. Right into the skin on Ashworth's head. And Tank, oh, God. Tank DDT'd him on those skewers. That's going to drive him deeper into that wound. He's almost smiling. He is smiling. Are you kidding me? I mean, I know Tank very well. I actually, at one point before Reverend Dan Wilson managed Tank. Oh, oh and now he's got a what sickle. What on earth? He has a sickle now. He's taking that sickle across the forehead of Jacob Ashworth. Ashworth is feeling it now, Jesus. All the way across the face of Jacob Ashworth, and Tank is taking it to him. Tank has been doing things like this for 23 plus years. Look at Jacob's head. And Jacob's up fighting again, he's punching Tank. Tank off the ropes. And I know Tank and Southern Fried Hall of Famer Iceberg, those guys have run the run the uh, the gamut here in the state of Georgia as well and used to ride together a lot. I have the most respect for both of these men. I tell you what, all three of them. Ashworth. Oh, a gossip plate right into the arm of Tank. It's stuck in his arm. It's on Tank's shoulder right now. It's, it's stuck into the skin. And now Tank is bleeding on his arm there. Ashworth again with a couple of punches. Ashworth choking, choking Tank. A shoulder block into the midsection. He's punching away at his busted open. Oh, and a blow, blow there by Tank. Sends oh, we, Jacob Ashworth right back down. Missed that one there. Tank lifted that leg right into the family jewels. Ashworth crumpled down to the mat, and Tank has a choke slam coming. Oh, choke, a choke breaker. Yeah, choke breaker there, excuse me. That has been a specialty of Tanks for quite some time. He has won championships with that choke breaker. Now, but I don't think this is about championships right now. This is about blood. This is about revenge. There's some druids now that have come out of the back. We've seen these guys before. Three guys out, Ashworth. Punching at Tank again. And Tank is out of the ring onto the floor. You can see him there. The Druids have made their way out, and now they've made their way back into the ring now as they come in and attack Jacob Ashworth as this is a no-holds-barred match. And look at Dan. He's just laughing, what excited at what's happening here. They are wrapping up. Oh, Lord. They are wrapping up Jacob Ashworth, and they have moved the canvas. Are these guys the ring crew? They are taking apart the ring. And they're exposing that hard wood underneath the ring, folks. If you've not seen. And we a both know what's ring. right under that wood, too. Yeah, nothing. It's metal. Ashworth just shoved everybody off. The Druids have scattered now as Ashworth fights them off. Ashworth with the fireman's carry. Drops Druid number one down. 
Druid number two, Scorched Earth coming for you, buddy. Thanks for coming. Druid number three in the corner. Ashworth is going after him now. Oh, he's got that sickle. Jacob Ashworth looking to get some revenge on these Druids. These are the guys that have been attacking Jacob Ashworth time and time again. Yeah, the last, the last month or so. What did he do that? What did he stop for? I guess he wants to see who it is. Oh, there you go. You got to tear the mask open first before you hit it. There you go. Oh, my God. Jacob tearing into the skin of whoever that is under that mask. Jacob has gone to a dark place today. Wait, you know, the thing is, Jacob took the other two out. I guess this one is the chosen one to take all the brunt of the punishment and frustration that Jacob Ashworth yes. has. And now Tank has rolled back into the ring now. And a kick to the leg. And it's send Ashworth into the, oh. Tank goes in, Ashworth gets a boot up. Tank is down. Ashworth knows what to do in a corner like this. Here comes a Vader bomb. Right across Tank onto the wood. Could this be it? And that is it. Ashworth now defeating the three Druids that have come out. Dan. Ashworth and Tank both down in the ring now. Ashworth hasn't moved since that three count. And the answer to the question of who's going to win this matchup is over now. And Ashworth wins the main event of Shindig as he and Tank have bled all over this canvas right now. A salute from Tank, whatever the issue was that caused this match to happen, the months of torment, etc., that has caused this bloodbath match to happen. The respect is there now for Jacob Ashworth as Shindig number nine for Southern Fried Championship Wrestling ends here tonight. Jacob Ashworth victorious over Tank.